So hi everyone. In this video, we're going to continue where we left off and uh, we're going to diagnose uh, and perform various diagnostic uh, tests on the VAR model that we created in the last video. So just to recall, we built our model, okay, which is model Oakon one and we specified four lags because that was result that was the result of the selection criteria that we had. So we can run a couple of tests to diagnose our VAR. So the first test is for autocorrelation, for serial correlation. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to test for that. So let's name an object serial1. Okay, so this is our first model. And VAR has an, uh, R has a built-in command called serial test in one of the packages. And we want to perform an autocorrelation test on our model. So that's model open one lags. Uh, let's use 12, say for example, 12 and just uh, our normal type equals uh, pt dot asymptotic and that should work, right? And let's display uh, the results of the test. So serial one, if you notice, um, since the p-value, okay, of this uh, portmanteau test uh, is greater than 0 0.05 it suggests that there is no serial correlation in this particular var so that passes so we don't want serial correlation inside of the var so that's good so we pass this test so another thing to test for is heteroscedasticity and essentially okay heteroscedasticity in a time series takes the form of arch effects uh, or it could take one, arch effects could be one form that it could take. And essentially, those are uh, periods of volatility. So we're trying to essentially test for a bit of volatility here. So arch, so let's test for that. So we're going to use something called an arch test. Okay. Model open one. Okay. Uh, Lags.multi is equal to 12. Okay. Multivariate only equals true. Okay. So uh, let's test for arch effects or for heteroscedasticity, and we determine that. Okay, notice the p-value is greater than zero point zero five. Uh, so we can uh, say that the model okay doesn't suffer from heteroscedasticity. So again, our model passes that test. Now another test that we can do is um, for the normal okay distribution of the residuals. So normal distribution of the residuals. So that's an assumption. We want our residuals to be normally distributed. And what the, the command we're going to do does is it's going to run three normality tests. And we're going to see if our residuals are normally distributed. So let's say norm one. Okay. And we run a normality test. On our model. So if you notice the commands, they look, they all look uh, quite the same. Open one. Okay, multivariate only is equal to true. Okay, and let's print the results, norm one. And if you notice, okay, JB is Harkebera test. And since the p-value is less than 0 0.05, sadly, okay, our residuals are not normally distributed. And it also failed um, the skewness and the kurtosis test. So in this case, okay, we uh, our model didn't pass the normality of residuals test. Uh, it's not the end of the world, that's fine. It's not the biggest violation. Another test we can test for is testing for structural breaks in the residuals. Okay. So we want to make sure that there are no structural breaks in our residuals. So, uh, so, so this is a test for model stability. So stability, so let's name this stability one. Whoops, stability one. And there's a command in R called stability, okay, that tests for the stability of the residuals. Model open one type is equal to OLS dash kusum. Your cumulative sum. Okay, and if we plot this stability one, we should get this. So notice. Okay, there are no um, there are no points in this graph wherein 
it exceeds the two red lines. So this is your upper confidence interval. This is your lower confidence interval. There are no points along the graph that exceed okay, this, uh, this red line. So the system is stable. Okay, so um, those are the types of stability. Those are the types of diagnostics we can have in a bar. And in the next video, what we'll do is we're going to do a Granger causality um, variance decomposition and uh, trying to get uh, the impulse response functions. And eventually, because another function of VAR is forecasting, we're going to forecast.